Alright, welcome back guys. Uh, we can start now. Welcome back to our second lesson for today. We'll start with Unit 10E. As you can see, the topic for today is Let's Go. And we're talking a little bit more about uh, making arrangements. Now, you guys are quite familiar with making arrangements with uh, your parents or with school. Um, when do we make arrangements? Well, we make arrangements when we need to uh, go somewhere or we need something to be planned. For example, if you want to go on a trip somewhere, uh, let's say for example you want to go on a holiday, obviously you need to plan and you need to figure out how you're going to get there, uh, where you're going to stay, what activities are you going to do, but most important, the arrangements when we talk about making arrangements it's between people so when you go to another city or you want to visit obviously you need to be in contact with your hotel or the family members of whom you are going to go visit so that you can plan out the trip and whatever you are going to do same goes for when you and your friends want to go to the movies for example and you want to go out you need to uh, prioritize to see if you guys will have enough spending money or if you want the guys go to, want to go to the movies or ice skating, you will plan your trip and you will gather all of your friends to see who can make it and who cannot make it. So this is what we talk about when um, we're talking about making arrangements. Now obviously arrangements and appointments go hand in hand and they have the similar uh, context but a little bit different. But today we'll focus on arrangements. In the picture you will see the boy and the girl and it seems as if they are going to uh, be going out somewhere. We do not know the context of the story as yet but we will go into it a little bit deeper in a moment. So if you have your books and you can open it you can follow along with me and then we can go through the, the unit together. Alright, let's start with Unit 10E. Okay, making arrangements, listen and repeat, and pay attention to the intonation. Now remember when we discussed this in class, when we talk about intonation, where I made the example of when your voice and the sound of your voice goes up and when it goes down. So pay close attention to what we are going to hear next and you can tell me where you hear the conversation and the voice go up and when it goes down. So I'll play one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine sentences, all right? And it will go through each one of them and you can tell me, can you spot the difference in the tone of the voice? So where does it elevate and where does it decrease? All right, we'll play the first one. What are we doing tonight? Okay, I'll play it again. What are we doing tonight? Okay, listening to the first one, what are we doing tonight? Obviously, this boy and this girl are making arrangements and the intonation where we can hear it is on what and doing. Okay, those are the two most important uh, core words in the sentence because the question revolves about what and what are we doing, right? Not about what are we seeing tonight, okay? I'm not sure. Right. Secondly, the second question, I'm not sure, and the intonation is on not. Obviously, this is the arrangement between two people that do not know at the current moment what they're going to do, so they are still figuring it out. Right, number three. Let's go to the movies. All right, obviously the intonation falls on the verb go because it's an action and it seems as if they are ready and they have something figured out. So these two are still deciding what they are going to do. It's not yet certain that they made up their minds. Let's go next to the next question. There's a good comedy on. Right, I'll play the next one. I'll play all of these sentences first and then we can talk about it. I prefer adventure movies. Right. Sounds good to me. We'll see that then. Eight o'clock outside the Rex. I'll be there. All right, judging from the conversation that we've just heard, there's a good comedy. It sounds that they agree on what they are going to do later on, right? They're going to watch a movie, an adventure movie, and they also arrange for a time. Very important. 
and when we make arrangements there must be time attached to it whether you say in two weeks time or in one week time it has to have a timeline attached to your arrangement otherwise it's just a gesture that you are making and nothing will get to it all right moving on we can go to the next page and this is where you and your friend can make sentences or dialogues because at this moment I cannot um, talk to you guys but what I would really love to do is you guys have Skype and you guys have all these platforms that you can use you can phone your friends and practice this conversation with them obviously if you are not skilled in it it's still okay right all I want you to do is practice with them we can go through some of the dialogue you guys remember that a dialogue is between two people and a monologue is when one person talks alone now we are looking at a dialogue between because two people are having a conversation all right so let's talk a little bit about the dialogue they are making an arrangement for when it's happening tonight are they sure well, they do not actually know at the moment, but then one of them agrees that they're going to the movies, which seems as if they are making the arrangement and it's coming to a firm conclusion. All right? So we see that the one also enjoys adventure movies, and then they also have a time and a place set up. All right, we can move to the next page. So this is the actual dialogue between the two people talking. Now what I want to draw your attention to is the mere fact that we have um, Anne and Tony. All right, we've gone through some of the context and what they were talking about and we'll just go a little bit more in detail to talk about what it, the conversation is actually all about. So if you can follow with me. All right, so if you can follow with me and then we can just go through the dialogue together. Right, I'll play it and then we can listen. So, what are we doing tonight? I'm not sure. Let's go to the movies. There's a good comedy on. I don't like comedies. I prefer adventure movies. I think comedies are a little silly. There's a good adventure movie on at the Rex. Sounds good to me. What is it? The Golden Compass with Nicole Kidman. Do you like her? I love her. Okay, we'll see that then. Eight o'clock outside the Rex. I'll be there. All right, let's go on. So it seemed like the conversation between the two of them are revolving about a movie night and they are making an arrangement to go see the movie. We have an idea of what they are going to like and we have the name of the place. Right. Obviously, as I said, that when we make arrangements, there needs to be a deadline or a timeline attached to it, as well as a place. And it seems as if they are going to watch the Golden Com Compass with Nicole Kidman. Obviously, the arrangement can change if there are better options at the movie theater. So this is just a suggestion that they are making at the moment. So later on, they might change their mind if something better is on the screen when they arrive at the movies and the name of the theater we see is called the Rex and they have a date as well all right so we can move on now read the dialogue and answer the questions all right what are Anne and Tony uh, where are Anne and Tony going all right so as we can see in the dialogue they made plans to go to the movie Right, what are they going to see? It is clear that they are going to see the Golden Compass with Nicole Kidman. Obviously, it might change because there might be better options, but this is the option they opt for at the moment. All right, and we see that Tony really enjoys the moves of Nicole Kidman, so which means that he is a huge supporter or fan. All right, when are they going to meet? They are going to meet at 8 o'clock the evening. Right, very important that they're going to meet 8 o'clock. Now, as for a.m. or p.m., or let me rather say uh, the morning or the evening, we do not know that at all. Right, so let me see. Yes, we do know. Uh, they are going to go at the in the evening um, at 8 o'clock. 
Alright, so that's confirmed. Alright, explain the sentences below in your own language and read the dialogue aloud in pairs. Right, so these sentences I want you guys to, if you can, you can discuss it with your friends. Obviously at the moment we are not that flexible to discuss it because we cannot go through it. I went through the context of all of these sentences so that we can understand and know what they are all about. Right, what I am going to touch upon is the mere fact of they are going to watch a comedy. Obviously there are different genres of movies and when I'm talking about genres I'm talking about different types of movies. They are going to watch a comedy. Uh, we also have drama, horrors and action movies. Okay, these are the different genres that we can go into but obviously we cannot do this and in this platform so I will be moving on as I've said that you can phone um, through Skype and through WhatsApp you can ask your friends and practice these with them as we move along all right so find the phrases in the dialogue which means the same so when we're talking about phrases that mean the same we're actually talking about synonyms right the words that are the same but in this example it's phrases Okay, so let's look at the first phrase, I don't know. Okay, so when we say I don't know, it seems as there are a little bit of ambiguity in the question. So looking at Tony's answer, I'm not sure. Okay, so Anne's asking the question, so what are we doing tonight? And Tony is saying, I'm not sure. And this seems like a phrase that we can use in the context over here. So. As you can see, that's the correct phrase. So, I don't know has similar meaning to I'm not sure. Alright, moving on to the next one. I like the idea. So, let's go through the passage to see if we can find the phrase that matches this sentence. I like the idea. Now, let's go to the movies. There's a good adventure. Sounds good to me. I think that this one is similar to the phrase that we are looking for and it is exactly the same all right so i like the idea and sounds good to me are some of the phrases that we can use and if we, i can put it to you this way it's another way of saying i like the idea all right she's great what is another phrase that we can use to supplement this sentence i think it is i love her um, that's the supplement that we can use and as you can see it's the correct phrase okay so we can say she's great i love her or i love her movies which has the same context all right and fine has the same context as as we can see i think it is okay and that's the correct answer once again as i've said you can pause the video beforehand because i would really love you to figure it out by yourselves first before you attempt to answer the questions Right, as we can move on decide what to do to in pairs tonight please if I would encourage you you can um, have your friends over and talk to them about this in groups or pairs and you can discuss all of this with your friends as we are not flexible at the moment to do this in a classroom and environment all right this is my favorite part and it is pronunciation now, as you guys know that I always drill this and I always make the examples. So by now you have, you are familiar with the concept because I've been preaching this to you all along. What I want to do is I want to go through these two um, phonemes with you so that we can have just a little bit of a background. So what are these phonemes used? In what context? As you can see, um, we have two uh, phonemes that we can use. And the sounds at the moment are not familiar and I don't want to play it at the moment because I want us to go through all of the words first before we play the actual um, sound. So first we have us, as, cat, cat, bug, bag, mad and mud. So these are the eight words that we have. Now looking at the first two words, we have us and we have as. As you can see, the words look and almost identical, but the way that we sound them are totally different. Okay, if we look at the word us, we have the sound of a, 
when we uh, pronounce it and if we look at the word as we have the word eh when we pronounce it now what I want to do is I want to play you these two sounds first so that we can put them in context ah ah right so as you have heard it is the sound eh and the second one ah uh. again ah uh. Right, seems like we are using the sound uh. So now that you've heard it and we can pronounce the first word us. Us. Right, and ah. Right, two totally different sounds that come from. So we now know that we cannot use this phoneme because this phoneme has a different sound to what we pronounce the word us. So it has to be the phoneme uh. uh. Right, so this is the correct answer. Okay, second word, as, as, and the phoneme that we are going to use is the A sound. Alright, moving on to cat, 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 the phoneme that we are going to use or the sound is the A sound and cat. I'll play it again for you. So if we look at the first two sounds, this is the A and this is the A. Uh, Obviously, we are going to use the air sound, and then for cut, we are going to use the uh sound. Moving on, we have bug and bag. Looking at the vowels, the uh and the air sound is uh, evident in these two words, so we are going to use air for bug, and we are going to use eh for bag. Right, moving on to mad and mud. If I can pronounce the word mad, which has the pronunciation and the sound of air, we know that this sound is er, uh, so we are going to use this phoneme. And ad, which has the same sound as mud and er, uh, and we know that we are going to use this phoneme. Okay, if you attempted it and got all of them correct, I want to say congratulations and good luck and because you are on the right track and for the rest of you who did not get it right, keep on practicing with it and at the end of the day you'll find it becomes very easy to do for yourself. So just keep on practicing, listen to the phonemes and the sounds and if you are not sure and then just practice again and sound it out so that you up until you get it. Alright, that's all for the um, access book and now we can go to our workbook. And we're back again. Alright, Unit 10E, opening up your workbooks. I want to encourage you to do this um, with me but I also want to encourage you to pause the video so that you can have a go at it first before we go through it together because I would really like you to practice it and then we can go through together obviously I cannot see what you guys are doing at the moment but I would love you guys to practice it first okay everyday English complete the exchanges with the phrases below now we have a couple of phrases that we are going to use obviously in uh, in an environment where we are making uh, arrangements let's look at some of the uh, phrases that we are going to use sounds good to me I'll be there around 6 p.m. I don't like her at all I'm not sure we'll see that then and I'm afraid right these are some of the phrases that we are going to use in the sentences below but I want you guys to do it first and to practice and we can go through it together and at the end of the lesson we can just fill in the answers and I will show it to you but I would really encourage you to do it first Okay, moving on to the first one. There's a good adventure at the Rex. Okay, so the proper response that we are looking for, okay, um, using one of these phrases is, well, we'll see that then. Okay, so obviously the first person is making a suggestion and the second person has to agree or disagree. And we see that the, looking at A and B when the first person makes a suggestion, for example, there's a good adventure on at the Rex, and the Rex is actually the place that plays the movie at the moment. So the correct response is, well, we'll see that then. 
All right, how about going out for a meal? And the correct response is, I'm afraid I can't come. Okay, we cannot use a different response around 6 p.m. because of the word can't. All right, that will cause two conflicting statements. So the correct statement is, I'm afraid I can't come. Okay, first person talking, let's meet outside the movie theater. Obviously, the second person agrees. Right, so there's an agreement between the second person as well. So the correct phrase that we can use for this is, I'll be there at 7.30. Right, moving on. Do you like Kate Winslet? And Kate Winslet is a British actor that we can see in the movie. So do you like Kate Winslet? Uh, and the correct answer for number four, I don't like her at all. Right, what are we doing tonight? And the correct answer, I'm not sure any ideas. Right, looking at the last phrase, I want to see the new Ben Stiller movie if you don't mind. Right, and the correct response for that is, it sounds good to me. And then moving on to number seven, what time should we meet? And obviously, if we talk about time, there's only one answer that we can use, All right? If we say, I'm not sure, we have already used that phrase in the sentence, and there's only one phrase for us to use next, and that is around 6 p.m. All right, that's the first part done. All right, moving on to the second part. Replace the phrases in bold with the phrases below. Now here we have five phrases. Number one, I don't know. Number two, are we doing anything? It's okay with. Okay, and she's great. We are going to use this and fill it in the um, passages below. So what are we going to do? Number one, sentence. Sounds good to me. We'll meet at eight o'clock. Right, and the correct response is it's okay with. Right, second one, fine, we'll go then. And the phrase that we will use there is okay. I just want to bring uh, and emphasize the fact that we are using the words in bold to reflect to match with the phrases on top. So, fine. We are going to use OK and we're not using the whole phrase. Okay, we're only using the ones in bold to replace it. Okay, so number three, so what are we doing tonight? And the emphasis is on what are we doing. Right, so are we doing anything is the correct phrase that we can use here. Well, I'm not sure for number four and I'm not sure the correct phrase that we can use is I don't know number five yes I really like her the emphasis being on I really like her which is for number five she's great all right listening you will hear a telephone conversation between two friends I would encourage you to listen to it first and do it first before I do it with you and then we can do it together. Right, I'll play the phrase for us and then we can go through it as a whole. Alright, I'll play the audio and then we can go through it and then we can look at the answers at the later stage. Unit 10E Exercise 3 Page 67 Hello? Hi, Deborah. It's Pete. How are you? I'm fine, thanks, Pete. So, what are we doing this Saturday? Well, I have a good idea. Let's go to a concert. Hmm, I don't feel like going to a concert. Let's do something different. Oh, okay. Um, why don't we go to see a talk show at a TV studio? Sounds good to me. What's the show about? Well, they're going to bring together pen pals who live in different parts of the world for the first time. That sounds interesting. I'd like to see that. What time does the show start? It starts at 8 p.m. My mom is driving me there. Do you want to ride? No, it's okay. My dad will drive me. What time do you want to meet? How about 7 o'clock outside the studio? That's a little early. How about 7.45? Okay. See you then. I'll be there. I can't wait. All 
right let's go on so you guys listen to the audio now we can discuss the answers below right you just had a telephone conversation between two friends right, what are we going to do we are going to tick the correct answer and there's a list of answers and options that we can go through obviously you guys heard the audio and you can play it again if you are unsure first question what are Pete and Deborah doing on the weekend if we look at the audio we have three options that we can go through right they are going to see a concert they are going to see a talk show or they are touring a TV studio so what are they going to do the correct answer is B they are going to see a talk show Right, number two, what is Deborah's opinion of the TV show? And once again, we have three options, A, B, and C. And the correct answer is C. She thinks it sounds very interesting. And for number three, how is Speed getting to the studio? All right, three options that we have. His mom is driving him, he is driving there, his dad is driving him there we have three options a b and c and if we listen correctly the correct answer is a his mom is driving him there all right what time are pete and deborah meeting and we have three options again which is a b or c and the correct answer being 7 45 is the time that they are going to meet all right let's go on to the last passage Okay, look at the chart below, ask and answer questions to find out what each person is doing this weekend. Alright, so we have some of the options, what are Ross doing, so here's some of the options. Now Ross is definitely not visiting his grandparents and he's definitely not going to a concert with friends. So what is he going to do for the weekend? Okay, is Ross going to visit grandparents? No. He isn't, uh, Jonathan and Jessica are visiting their grandparents, but we are focusing on Ross. So what is Ross doing? He's doing clothes shopping, study for exams, and cooking dinner. So these are all the things that Ross is doing. So if we look at the sentence, uh, Jessica go clothes shopping, right. is Jessica going clothes shopping? I'll ask again, is Jessica going clothes shopping? Now this is Jessica's chart, so we see no, she isn't, right? We can see that Helen and Ross are doing clothes shopping, but not Jessica. So what is she doing the weekend? She's visiting her grandparents and she's going to a concert with friends. Okay, all of the tick boxes is what they are doing or are doing and all of the crosses are the appointments that they are not currently doing so we see Helen study for exam right so what question can we ask is Helen studying for an exam right let's look at Helen's chart right Helen is going clothes shopping and cooking dinner so we can conclude that Helen is not going uh, to visit her grandparents Helen is not studying for exam and Helen is not going with friends so is Helen studying for the exam? Let's see. And we have no. Helen is not studying for the exam. All right. Jonathan and Ross are studying for the exam currently at the moment. Okay. Last one. We have number four. Jonathan cooked dinner. So what question can we ask? Here we have core words. So is Jonathan cooking dinner? Now here is Jonathan's start. Is he cooking dinner? He's visiting grandparents and going to a concert and studying for an exam. So is he cooking dinner? And we see no, he is not cooking dinner. However, Helen and Ross are cooking dinner. Right, Helen and Ross are cooking dinner, but not Jonathan. Right, last one, Ross going to a concert with friends looking at the chart so number five here we have ross is ross going to a concert with friends and we say no he isn't so who is going to a concert we see jonathan and jessica going to a concert with friends 
All right, and that's the end of unit 10E, and then we can conclude, and I will put on the screenshots for you. All right, and as you can see, this is the screenshot for unit 10E. Okay, for answer number one. Right, and this is unit 10E continuing on. You guys can just pause the video and then we can take it from there and you can fill in the answers. Alright, and that's all from me for unit 10E and I hope you have a lovely day. See you with unit 10F. Goodbye.